Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course to learn how to model slabs and foundations in the RAM Structural System RAM Modeler. Over the next series of videos, you will learn how to model slabs and foundations in the RAM Modeler, which will include the process of modeling slab edges and openings, defining your slabs and decks, and then assigning them to the model. You will also learn how to model spread, continuous, and pile cap foundation systems. In this video, you will learn how to model several foundation types in the RAM modeler. Foundations can be laid out in the RAM modeler at the bases of columns or walls. In RAM structural system, spread footings, pile cap foundations, and config continuous footings can be modeled and analyzed completely within RAM structural system. Map foundations may be modeled in the RAM modeler, but they cannot be analyzed or designed in RAM structural system. The map foundations modeled in RAM structural system can, however, be imported into RAM concept for further analysis and design. For this sample structure, we are going to be assigning several different foundation types on the first floor layout, and the first floor does represent the base of our particular structure. To start modeling our foundation systems, we're going to go to our Layout toolbar and select our Layout Foundation icon. When this icon has been selected, all of the tools to model our continuous, spread footing, and pile cap foundations will now become available. The first foundation system we're going to model is a spread footing. So in our Layout Foundation toolbar, we will select our Add Footing icon. Now this tool can be used to model single column spread footings or also pile cap foundations. We're first going to be modeling some spread footings and we have that footing type already selected. We can then select the orientation of the footings major axis and we're going to go ahead and locate it parallel to our column web. We can also locate it at an angle from our global X axis. We can also enter a concrete compressive strength a unit weight of concrete, this will be used in the calculation of the modulus of elasticity, and a unit weight for self weight, which will be used to calculate the dead load of the footing itself. We can also use normal weight concrete, and we're going to specify to use the calculated value of the elastic modulus. Lastly, we can also select the yield strength of our reinforcing steel. When we have entered all of our appropriate parameters, we can use our graphics mode to add a single footing at a time or fence a particular area which will add a single column footing at the base of every column within that fence. For this exercise, we'll go ahead and click on the fence button and then using our cursor, we will draw a fence around the columns located at grid lines D, E, and F at the interior of the structure. And here we can see that all of my spread footings have been added. Next, we are going to model some pile cap foundations. To return to the previous dialog, we can just right click in our main window, which will bring us right back to the add single column footing dialog. This time for the footing type, we're going to go ahead and select the pile cap option, and then we're going to keep the rest of the properties at their default condition. Then in my graphics mode, I'm going to go ahead and click on the single button, and then I'm going to click on each column that I want to model a pile cap foundation at. Next we are going to learn how to model a continuous footing. Over in my layout foundation toolbar, I will now click on the add continuous icon to add a continuous footing. Here I can enter my concrete compressive strength, my unit weight, and my unit weight for self weight calculations. I'm going to be using normal weight concrete and I'm going to use the calculated elastic modulus. I'm also going to use a yield strength of 60 KSI for my reinforcing steel. Lastly, I'm going to enter a tolerance value of 12 inches. This is the distance from the center line within which columns and walls are to be included in the design of the footing. So say for example, I had a concrete wall along grid line 1 and then my columns were slightly off that grid line. If they're within the 12 inch dimension that I'm going to specify here, they will be included in the continuous footing design. 
Once I've entered all of my parameters, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Add button and then graphically add my continuous footings. Each continuous footing will require two clicks, one at the start of the footing and one at the end. Here I'm going to click on Grid Intersection G1 and then I'm going to follow that up by clicking on Grid Intersection A1. And here I've added my first continuous footing. Then I'm just going to work my way around the perimeter of the structure, adding a continuous footing below each of my concrete walls. And that completes our assignment for our continuous footings. Now continuous footings can be placed below walls or below, below columns, as long as your columns again are within a line. So I could also add a continuous footing connecting two columns in my model if I needed to. Now by default the foundations that we just modeled are going to appear at the base of the columns. We can raise or lower our foundation elevations using the elevation icons available in the layout foundation toolbar. This will allow us to change an elevation of a footing and also it will raise or lower the length of the column or the length of the wall. For this particular exercise we're going to leave everything at the base of the structure and not change any elevations. If we want to review our model in three dimensions again I can go back to my 3D viewer and I can see all of my foundations appearing graphically on this plan. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.